What's up, all the people? My name is Delonte Harrison. And um, you might know me from, uh, a lot of people calling me different stuff, different neighborhoods. Um, call me Tay, Black, Fly, Head. Um, I got so many nicknames. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, give you all a rundown. Of some history that I've been in and things I've done. My life how I started and stuff like that. Just to keep a documentation of my, my life history because I think it's I think it's very I think it's very important to me. And I think what I'm gonna do is um, share that with the world. It's no secret, um, but it's an amazing life that I think it's amazing life. I think I, I've been blessed um, many times over to, uh, uh, just by being humble, uh, listening and learning. Uh, taking advice, um, I learned from that. So, uh, I've also lived here in Washington, D.C., in the DMV, and um, I'm almost 50 years old. You can't tell that. Body's cut up, I eat right. But um, at the same time, also, um, I lived in different neighborhoods. I lived in, uh, my experiences, I grew up in South, born and raised in Southeast D.C. Um, but raised in the DMV, all in all in the all quads of the city. And I learned a lot of uh, different things uh, from different people, from different situations. I learned a lot. And I just want to you know, share my experience because I think that uh, people need to know that if you, if you do, I think I need to be an example of hope. When things seem like they're they're falling and crumbling around you, that it's always light. It's always happiness. You determine how you determine how you you're going to live that, accept that life. And um, I think it's very, I think it's very important that you learn to enjoy um, enjoy life. Because that's what I'm doing. And you understand why I want you to understand my story. How it was. How, how it started and how it's ending. Like the book is still written. It's not even ending, but the book is it's still being written. And it's written in an awesome type of way that I'm excited about because I know where it came from. Uh, didn't have anything. It was homeless. And, uh, you know, been through some relationships that were uh, problematic and some that I wish that were, were, were held up and some of them. Uh, uh, you know, they just, they just was, they were just for a season. Uh, all the friendships and stuff that I made throughout, throughout these years, um, and relationships that I should have cut off a long time ago. Uh, you know, and just, 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 just the nature of, of my life. And I think uh, it's very interesting to me. I think it's interesting. I don't know why it must, but I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I want to tell it because I think it needs to be told. I can't, you know. Maybe I can write a book and make a thousand, make a million dollars or whatever. I don't know. I, that money is not, it's not my goal. Money does help, though. Money does help. But that's not my goal. My goal is to, uh, I find out now, being being in the situation that I am, my goal is to uh, to bring my people together. Just bring the people together. I think uh, they, 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 they see too much too much green grass and, and Across the street, too many shiny vehicles, you know, and other people's driveways, when they don't even realize the value that they have within themselves. I have to, I had to learn that. Um, I, had, I had to learn that because there's so much that uh, that I take for granted because everything about my life, uh, I never wanted. Everything in my life, uh, things and situations and all that it's not it's not what i wanted but it was given to me i was, it was an opportunity you know an opportunity and i and i took advantage of that and i grabbed it and held it tight because I, it was a gift every opportunity to me was a gift from god it was a gift like uh you know and also another thing about learning to god is in us uh, i look in the mirror and i thank god i, th I think i think God for giving me the wisdom to make good decisions in my life. 
you know, because we are, we are made in God's image, so we are God. We, we are we our own gods, but we we, we kind of push that away on different things. But anyway, um, well, I'll cover that up. But anyway, so uh, I just I just want to give a rundown of, of, of my life and just you know I think it's going to be a long series because my life is very very unique and very. Uh, very interesting. You know, I lived in um, I lived in deep Washington D.C. I lived in Ridge Road. I lived in Parkland. In Parkland, I lived in, in four or well, three different places. You know, um, I lived. Uh, in, I'm in Berlin now. Uh, I'm just. I lived in. You know, just 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 lived in different places. So. Born in the 70s, um, I, back in the day, um, I remember you know being skinny and, and all that, living on Ridge Road. I had good friends, Brian and you know Melvin and, and DJ and Vondale and um, you know two new fat fat face. I know, right? We all had nicknames. Crazy, right? <laughs> two little fat face. That was that was crazy. But um, yeah, and I had a friend named Tiki Pop. But uh, I can still remember the names, and um, you know, living living in Ridge Road and stuff like that was really different. It was really different. I was young, um, went to Fletcher Johnson. Um, I was always sick, always, always. Uh, I remember being always, always sick. For some reason, I was always sick. Um, asthma. Um, I had I had so many medicines I was taking as a young child. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't sleep, just, just, just terrible. God had different plans for me. He had different plans for me. So, um, I remember back in the day, I remember back in the day when, um, living in Ridge Road, we used to, uh, we used to play out the front and, uh, in the snow and stuff like that, playing football. That was really good. That's when I first, uh, we couldn't afford a big, I don't think we had a big run. somebody, I think it was Brian actually. You know, some one of them let me ride the big wheel, and I was like, "Oh man, I love the big wheels." Because we were poor people on the, on the block, you know. But, you know, certain people had big wheels and video games, DJ, and uh, it was really, it was really interesting to uh, to grow up like that because it was, it was a community. Uh, even though we were, we were poor, it was a community, and I can remember when, at times. One time I went to school. One time I was I was in I was in school um, in Fletcher Johnson, and uh, I kept getting picked on, bullied and stuff like that. And um, I called myself to, trying to defend myself. And I remember um, taking a knife to school, a little tiny knife to school, and for the bullies. And I think it fell out of my socks. And I was called to the principal office, and. I was reprimanded something terrible. Because I was young. I was, I don't know how old I was. I can't remember that. But I was young, but I do remember the incidents. And I remember, because I, I, I was getting picked on, because I was like skinny, skinny teeth. I mean, skinny, big teeth. Little frail body. And uh, I remember it fell in my pocket. And I remember Dot, she was a uh, crossing guard. And I remember that it was so tight of a community, I was in trouble at school, but it didn't last there. Man, when I got the crossing guard at my, the crossing guard was was wailing on me, you know, back in the day, wailing on me, saying, look, you know you ain't supposed to be here, you know, acting like that. And I remember I was getting my, my beat by the crossing guard. I got beat by um, by Miss Harley, Brian and Tony's mother on Ridge Road, man. That scared me. That scared me to death. I got beat by by all the neighbors on the on the block coming down the street before my mother got home. Let me tell y'all. <laughs> I had that changed that changed my whole way of thinking because I was in trouble by the neighborhood. I was I was like, man, the neighborhood don't ain't, ain't with me. I gotta change my ways. But growing up in Ridge Road, man, was was very. Um, very fun, 
but it was it was it was trying times. We were, we were poor and things like that. Um, as much as I can remember, uh, I remember the good times with, with, with friends sitting out in the front stoops, watching the, uh, the ice cream truck. Kojak, we had an ice cream guy, guy come around the way. His name was Kojak, and uh, I remember my mother sending me, "Go tell Kojak, give me some cigarettes." She said to me, I was a little kid. She said to me, Coach, I coach, I didn't tell your mother she ain't got to pay me. She'll pay me next time. This guy was really cool. Ball head. That's why I called him Coach. Jack. Ball head. He's talking like this. Yeah, y'all, yeah, just tell your mother. Just tell your mother. It's Coach. Jack. That was so crazy. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I, I grew up, went there, went to Fletcher Johnson. And Fletcher, I was always sick in the school. And I really couldn't get a good education because I was always home. I was catching asthma attacks like every day. Every time they cut the grass, Every time um, the weather changed, um, I always end up being really, really sick, and I had to stay home. So it really, it really hindered me from learning a lot, and um, which is amazing because it hindered me from learning a lot. But later on in life, I haven't fallen into any traps that were set before. Uh, when I mean traps. Um, you know, certain certain schools, because back in the day in the schools, we used to have um, carpentry. Uh, you had carpentry. You, this is a regular school, free. Carpentry, um, uh, welding, plumbing, uh, automotive. This is all the school. All the schools had this this stuff free. It was you always had someone from uh, an auto body shop or something like that who worked who was a mechanic teaching the kids how to fix things. There was typing classes. There were sewing classes. There were computer classes. There were this was this was you know, Fletcher Johnson had all of these all of these places. They were there, and um, you know it it was uh, very very educational, um, vocational, uh, all of that, and so it, it made you a better person to get out of school and have a trade that you can get a job in a trade because you took you know the fundamentals of what was going on in any 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 trade that you that you took. And so um I was always sick. I was always a sick child. So I didn't really I couldn't really as I was getting older I couldn't really get into that. And so like I guess I'm just telling my life story. And you can go you can go sir. And so and so uh you know I just, I, you know, grew up and grew up around, around um, you know, Ridge Road and things like that. But also, um, we had. Um, I remember growing up there. And look, I remember, remember growing up there, having good times, good times there, uh, running up and down the hill and stuff like that, going to Queen, uh, Queen of Peace, uh, stuff like that. Um, but we moved from we moved from Ridge Road. I think we went right to. Where did we go from Ridge Road? I think we went right to. Uh, was it Wildlands? Was it Wildlands? Or was it, uh, no, it was Parkland. From Ridge Road to Parkland. I think that's what we went to, Parkland. And, um, Parkland or Ridge Road, I'm not sure. One of them. But, you can go right ahead, man. You're welcome. And, um, always be kind to people. I've learned that too over the, over, over, over the years. Kindness gets you anything and everything that you want. You respectful, you get it. You know, it might not come in your form that you want sometimes, but it'll come back to you 50 times forward. So, yeah, we, so, so we, we was, um, I, we moved, I think we moved to Parkland. Should we start Parkland? Yeah, it was Parkland before we walked. Though it was a wild place. I can't remember. Wild place. But, um, yeah, so I lived in, I went, let's start with, uh, let's start with Parkland. Yeah, let's start with Parkland. I don't know, the, I don't know which way it is. I think it's Parkland. I think it's wild place in Parkland, Parkland, wild place. But let's start with Parkland. So when I, when we moved to Parkland, um, that was that was an amazing time in my life because um, no, nah, that's why it was back in Waller Place. We went to Waller Place. I'm stopping Waller Place. So so when we was in Waller Place, that was a crazy time because I was I was introduced to you know as a teenager I was introduced to. Uh, Waller Place is totally different. They talk different. Waller Place wasn't, it was, it was, they talk different. They um, dress different. They dress with a lot of colors. Um, 
we, we they was we we Wild Place was a stylish type of type of place. Everybody was styled. Everybody was was dressing, and I mean they they stepped out. You know, everybody took took pride in, in stepping out, looking like something. You know, when we was, we were just going outside. Just everybody taking pride and stepping out. It wasn't just a white t-shirt, or white tee, or nothing like that. Nah, you had to look you had to look like something when you, when you walk outside. Even though we was just hanging out. And that, that was different. I remember when I first met my friend, Monty, one of my best friends, Monty, um, we, I came around Wild Place, I was all skinny, big head and stuff like that. And and they, and they was like, yeah, Monty, yeah, he your size, he your size, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he was like, it was like, yeah, he your size. You can, you can take him, you take him. I'm scared, my heart pumping. I'm, I'm surrounded by all these guys, like all these dudes, cause it was a number of guys around our neighborhood. I don't know, we had a lot of women too. But Wall Place was a lot of people. A lot of we, we had a lot of people, and I remember I was so nervous. And Monty was the smallest one, or, or he was in my face, and I just stole him. I ain't had no power. I ain't know how to fight. I stole him and ran. <laughs> so him, my boy Clyde, they chased me like all through the neighborhood. But they didn't know that uh, I can run long. I didn't know I can run long because I was suffering from asthma and all this stuff. But whenever you scared that adrenaline running, hmm, you can be running forever. And they was they was always talking to me running. You keep on running. Why are you running? I'm running like this. I'm 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 trailblazing. Like y'all, you you better you better keep up. <laughs> and then after a while, stop running, and uh, we became friends and we started hanging out and stuff like that. It was it was a good time. Wild place was amazing. That's when I learned go go, because uh, S's lived in our backyard. Um, JY, JY always came in our backyard. Wild Place was a good spot they played at. Um, who else? EU was always around us. Like they played across the street in Valley Green. So it was it was um, a learning experience of um, growing up. It was it was amazing. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of gun violence. All that stuff was going on. I mean, should people get shot? I remember one time around Walla, um, I saw somebody get shot. Um, um, it was late. I heard some guys arguing in my bit and, and, and I looked out the window and one dude just went up to the car and, sh sh and shot the dude, pow, pow, shot the dude, pow, 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 in the car. The guy was trying to back up and shot him, pow, 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 right, right, like right through the windshield, right through the windshield. And he didn't run. I was like, what the, f he didn't run. Shot him, went to the side and shot and walked away. I was like, my neighborhood is rough. But we did have the, one of the biggest drug dealers and drug families and drug connects in the city. So I didn't I didn't know that. That's that's how I grew up. Grew up with all that with all that craziness. And, and when we used to what was was amazing is that the whole neighborhood used to vacation together. You said how vacation together? Yes. The big drug dealers used to say, all right, look. All of us going down to Kings and Minion. We got we rent the hotel out. Everybody, you they they literally rent the hotel, the whole the whole the whole hotel. They they the whole neighborhood was 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 empty. Like everybody goes to go to Kings and Minion, have a good time for the whole weekend. The whole neighborhood, so it's like man, we all going. We, 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 you got to come on. We, we you need a ticket. We just get in the car. Come on. The whole neighborhood. I never never experienced anything like that, but that's how it was. Everybody was poor. Everybody was poor, so everybody was trying to hustle to try to make some money because, I mean, everybody was on welfare. I mean, we was getting powder mix, milk and eggs and stuff like that, um, food stamps. Everybody was poor. And so when when when, every, when, when whoever got the connects, because we had, like I said, we had a lot of big drug dealers in there. So we had a bunch of kids around the neighborhood Poor, poor kids doing nothing, and the drugs came along, and we were, uh, and we were just out there. So they gave us the drugs. We sold. We made some money. We was able to buy things for the house, and also the people that was coming around our neighborhoods and around Walla was majority white people buying drugs. They was buying it like pan over fist. I mean, it was a lot of drugs they was buying. They they always came around. There. We knew they was they was they be on it. Coming back every hour on the hours, finding money and trying to trade. They was trading things, guns and jewelry, all that stuff for drugs. You know, um, 
it, it was wild. PCP was out. Um, really, really crazy. I remember one time, the girl, the guy named was Daryl. I think his name was Daryl. And he was like, he was really high. When he get high on PCP, he's real strong. Like, like I remember one time, they had like 20 cops on this guy trying to break his arms. Like, he was holding him to a pole. And they was trying to break his wrist. Let go, he would not let go. They probably broke his wrist, but he was still holding on. I was like, wow. And they, they end up saying he jumped off the bridge. He ain't no car. He ain't no car. They, they took him off. They took they locked him up and dumped, dropped, and dumped him off the bridge because they probably was tired of him because it takes about 20 people to get him down once he started lunching. But Darrell, yeah, he was he was on drugs, man. The drugs is like, it's crazy. But but he ain't heard nobody in the neighborhood. He was just, he get high and he be super, super strong. But he was like, uh, Omar, so people like this, that thing, he coming, man. he coming. So we got out of his way. But um, yeah, it was it was PCP it was on neighborhood, crack was bad in the neighborhood, um, heroin was bad. Um, but we found a way to do cookouts, we found a way to do talent shows, we found a way to do all that. That's because of the drug money. And what that did was uh, reinforce and made made the community made our little community strong, even though it was terrible. Even though we was having a bad product, because we didn't have we didn't lack we didn't have the lack of money or resources, we had to take care of each other, you know, any way how any any means by any by any means, and I mean I can I can't even tell you how many houses I didn't got fed you know over how many houses because everybody if you at the house, you 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 eat somebody cooking you eat you know you come over their house you cook and you eat I mean just we had to take care of each other. Wild Place was, was a really, really, um, a really, really, really crazy place, but you know, it was, it's how I grew up, you know. Um, and I remember moving from Wild Place, uh, we went to uh, Parkland, which was not too far, but it was totally different. Parkland's totally different from, from Ridge Road. Ridge Road is different than Wild Place. We went to Parkland. So when we was in Parkland, that's right, Parkland. So in Parkland, Parkland was about just about get getting in there, get anything, just getting into everything, man. Drugs were still there, drugs was there too. Um, yeah, Parkland was Parkland was different. Uh, I, you know, um, wow, that's right. I've been in job court too. I gotta tell you about the story about the job court. That was that was wild. That was really wild. I, I started to ride up there in job court. Um, so yeah, so Parkland, it was, um, it was like a bunch of kids, again, nothing to do, but this time, which was different, is that we had, um, we, we had, um, the Parkland Community Center, and their, they, their, their dedication and their, their creed was that they were going to try to change and save as many kids as they, as they can, and expose them to many different things they could possibly could. With the county help, and which they did, they had like um, they had they was partnered with like CVS. They was like uh, uh, CVS would give us stuff. It was it was it was a whole lot of uh, local businesses that were pouring into the community center, um, and they they were they were helping us out. We, we was able to give stuff to the community. So now people were, were getting things from the community center, which was a great asset asset to to the community because when when the, the politicians came to speak, they had to come to the community center. They didn't have to do it from downtown or you have to come to the office. No, they they came to the community center. When they came, when they we called them, they came. They had no choice, you know. Uh, you know, speaking speaking of council members and stuff like that, I'm a product of uh, Marion Burry, the late great the late great mayor for life, Marion Burry. Uh, if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't have a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the job that I have today. That man poured and in, poured into the community like no other. Poured into my life like no other. Him and Wilhelmina Rolock, I worked for her too. She was, she was definitely a mentor in my life, and she, she molded me um, and told me some things that I need to do. And, uh, and she was really strict. What I thought was like, man, she was really strict, but she was laying the foundation of my life that uh, I'm using to this day. So back, so back on, back in, back to Parkland. So Parkland was really, 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 really cool. Parkland Community Center was off the chain. It was really nice. Uh, we, 
we the way they had it set up is that they had all the games, pool tables, ping pong tables. They even had the computer back in the day, and everybody was pressing to get on that. So what they did was use that to their advantage. We had a we had a lot of um, young kids coming in from the schools. They got in early, you know, from the daycare or something like that. They drop them off in the school, and they had a bunch of homework. Like a lot of kids had homework. So in order for you to in order for you to uh, participate in getting on a list to play pool, ping pong, or even get on the computer, you must get a child and help them with their homework, or to get a child or two and help them with their homework. What that did was you in, you instantly become a tutor for the kids before you play. You know you want to get on there and play first because you get out of school, but you had to wait until, until the kids get their, got their homework done. And they used that as as motivation for the kids to uh, to participate in in the um, in the center, which was work, work, which worked well because now everybody's like this. The the kid every kid that came in to, to play pool or ping pong knew the kids that they were going to help with their homework because they helped them the day before. So they 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 was like this. So how you doing your test? Or how how did that work out? Well, I didn't know. Then they go back over them because they're older, and they teaching them how to do it. It was a great system. We were teaching the younger kids how to get ahead and, and what the, what's the things to do, and they became their mentors. And and when it, and, and it was like, um, if you're young, if you're if you're old and you see the young kid act up, you will say something first. You'll be like, Nah, you don't do that. That ain't how we do it. Because they listen to you. They need you. They look up to you. So you know, Parkland really changed my life and showed me uh, how they had mentor men mentors there to show you how to become a man and how to act and how to dress. Um, I learned a lot on how just to be a man and be clean cut and be respectful to women. Um, it was very, it was a very um, great, great time in my, great time in my life growing up, learning so much, so many different things. And we had sessions where you, um, the police used to come in and actually talk to us about things that's going on in the neighborhood, things that they've seen. I remember one time, they, uh, the police, uh, the, the this community center said, yeah, are we having a special night tonight. Everybody wanted to come in and they let everybody in. It was packed, they let everybody in. Cause you had, the way, the power that the community center had is that <clears throat> if you wanted to play these games, they were taking role. Who comes to these meetings? They had they had the, all the kids. They want all the all the kids in the community to come to the, come to the center, and um, and come to the center if you want to continue to to, to to participate in these games and trips. They had trips because money was being donated. Um, and one of the, one of the trips I went on was the youth hostel, um, America Youth Hostel. That was really great. Took us to West Virginia. Learn how to learn how to trust people learn how to uh, do things as a community or, or, or a group of people. That was really a good skill for me because um, I learned a lot. You know, you know I, I, I learned that I didn't, uh, from, from that moment, I learned that I didn't wash my hands enough. It's, it may sound simple, but as a kid, you didn't, I didn't pay attention to that until I went and we was all washing our hands together. And I was like, man, your hands are dirty. It's like, yeah, my hands are dirty. I said, you need to wash them. And I got taught how to wash them in my nails. How to wash my hands? Like I said, we was poor. I didn't have you know too many mentors. So, old man figure in the house. Um, so, we, when we when we in Parkland, one day they, they had calling all the people, all the kids from the neighborhood. You know, come and come to the center. You know, blah blah blah. And the police was like, police was like, yeah, we having a lot of drugs um, activities going on, such 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 such. And everybody just yeah, there's drugs everywhere. You know, and he said yeah, but um. We care about you guys, and um, we've been watching. We've been watching, watching you, watching some of them, some of some of y'all, and we have a list. It was reading names off people who who they watch and, and, and was watching selling drugs. That was everybody in that joint. Everybody's like, just, "Oh snaps!" They watch. Yeah, we keeping it. We watching y'all. We know what y'all doing. It changed the whole community, just like that changed the whole community because everyone was like oh crap they know me and they was nervous and stuff like that it changed the whole community and all at once it changed the whole community and the drugs in the vicinity went away because everybody's like nah I want some drugs right here because 
Uh, police know who we are. And it changed the whole, that changed the whole uh, thing. I mean, one time on top, when on 22nd, uh, um, one of my, one, somebody was, somebody was shooting. And I remember the bullets going past my head. Everybody's running. I remember the bullets going back. Shoot, shoot, shoot. And I, and, I, and I realized that as I got older, I'm like, man, I could have, that could have been me shot in the head, but somebody did get shot, but it wasn't me, but, and I was just hanging out. But you can hear the bullets going, pew, pew. That was, that was, that was crazy. And so, um, Parkland was, was, was amazing. Um, we had an ice cream truck around the corner named Jack's, Jack's truck. Um, what else? I remember that was the first time, um, that my mother, uh, told me to, you know, to pay the rent and I had to go get a money order and stuff like that to learn that. Um, just, I had, those are, those are the things that we had to do, like, to, to keep, keep things going in Parkland. We had, Parkland was a great community because everybody tried to help each other because we all was large families and um, we all was struggling to, to make ends meet. Some people had jobs, some people didn't. Um, just, just a good, good time. Yeah, drugs was all over the place. But we had good times with Parkland Community Center really helped all of us, all of us get over those humps, those dry times when there was no money or no food because they, 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 they have stuff to give away. I am, um, um, they taught us a lot. Like I said, how to, how to tie a tie, how to dress for an interview, how to work on the computers, how to um, um, interact with different age people. It was it was a great great. I, I I miss it. I think every community needs a parkland community. Uh, we need a community centers all over. We need we need community centers all over the country, all over the country. They should be community centers everywhere. People should be able to go, get away. The kids can go to the community center and just get away, hang out in a safe space. You know, you tell them get off the street, get off this corner, get off the. Where we gonna go? Where they gonna go? Where we gonna go? You can't even hang out nowhere. You know, I think I think it's responsible. It's, it's our politicians' responsibility to make sure that people have a place to go. They make it for the seniors. The seniors got senior citizens, seniors uh, buildings everywhere. Why not the kids? Why, why the young folks won't have their own spot? They're not worthy. They human beings just like everybody else. That's what Parkland said. These kids need some place to go. They can't be stuck up in the house once they get off of school. They need something to do. You gotta provide that for them. But um, yeah, Parkland was 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 great. I've learned a lot when I was living there. Um, um, it was it was I had some good friends who, who lived there. You know, Speedy and just just a whole, it's a whole it's a it's a, it's a whole lot of uh, good good memories in, in, in Parkland. Uh, I remember when. Um, I finally, I, I, I remember we were in the trash, um, and I found this little tape deck. This little tape deck, you put a just tape in it, close it, and you push it down. You know, it's like from old, long ones. And I remember uh, finding some old speakers that somebody threw out in the trash, and it didn't work. So what I did was unscrewed it, fixed a little wire inside, and, and the speaker worked. So then I took some wire and connected to the to the um, tape deck because that speaker didn't work. You know, it had a little speaker on top, and I took that out. And connected the wires and the big speaker worked. I was like, oh no. So I ended up having to make my own little homemade stereo system, which was great. It was which was which was really good. I mean, I really enjoyed learning, you know, learning that. And I was like I said, it was poor. Um, I remember my um, my friend and then check this out. So one of my friends, so it's, it's some good it's some good folks that I lost along the way too. And, and, and growing up doing the drugs. And I remember one guy, I, I went to Job Corps. So um, I, when I was in Parkland, I was I was falling behind in school because I was always sick and then I was getting older. And um, I was falling behind in school. So I um, heard about Job Corps. And so um, I remember uh, going downtown to try to, you know, try to sign up for Job Corps, but I need my mother's signature. So I signed up myself. I signed my mother's signature and signed up for job but with the Woodland, the Woodland in Laurel. And um, I, I had to do something. I felt like I, I felt like I had to do something. I was, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be like um, 
my peers, they went, they didn't have anything else to do. They were just stuck. I wanted to do something different. And because um, I felt like I didn't fit. I always felt like I'd never fit in the world. I never fit into a genre. And that comes from, I think that comes from me not, I, it comes from me not know, not not going, being to school and learning the same thing that everybody else was learning. I was always sick. So I was always behind the trends, the settings, missing those big moments like sports and stuff like that. I wasn't into that because I was always sick at home. And um, so it kind of delayed all that, all of that, uh, that information, it delayed, it, it delayed that for me, which was kind of a good thing because I didn't, I didn't, I, didn't, I missed out on all of those other things. I probably missed out on some good stuff, but it made me green. It made me, as an adult, it makes me green and I'm always questioning things. Like people expect me that, you know about this right here? No, no. And they're like, yeah, it's like this or not. Why is it like this? And they'd be like, uh, I don't know. That's always been that way, but why? So, and I come along and, and have a different question about that. So that's just, I just have a different, different, I want to know why. And why is it that way? You know, so I, um, in Parkland, Parkland was good. I lost, like I said, I lost a lot of people in Parkland, like um, Tiny, his name, they call him BMW. He was a, man, he could have been a boxer. This dude was strong, was short, really cool dude. Nobody messed with him. We, man, I remember he called me and he called me up. He called me, he said, man, I'm coming to get you. I'm sitting up, up because I had lived. Oh, that's right. I, I, I lived uptown too. I lived uptown off of Crittenden Street um, and Florida Avenue. Um, you know, and um, and so he, when I was up, I remember I was up uptown and he called me. It's like, you know, I'm coming to get you. I was like, all right, all right. And I was waiting and come to find out he had um, got killed in the house. He got killed in, this, in somebody's house. I think it was high or something. He got killed. I think I stabbed or something like that. I stabbed to death, and it was it was it was it was terrible. It was terrible because he was a good guy. He was a good dude. Um, at least in my eyes, him and one of my one of my friends. Um, um, what's his name? Um, Lorenzo. One of the, one of the dudes I met in Job Corps when I was at Job Corps. I forgot the guy's name. He was he was anyway the guy. I brought him around our neighborhood. I said, man, he said, man, where you, where you live? I said, man, I live in Waller Place. I mean, I live in Parkland. So he came, he came around Parkland, you know, hanging around and said, and then um, he was, he was really wild. This guy was, the guy I'm talking about, like stole a police car um, and drove it back to Job Corps. Like, what is this dude doing? But anyway, this guy came around and killed, um, he was messing around with a gun or whatever. Cause everybody had guns. He messed around with a gun and shot um, shot Lorenzo um, in the chest. Really good dude. Lorenzo was really good. He used to always talk about how his mother didn't love him and stuff like that. He was living with his grandmother, but his mother was, was so busy, um, I guess, living her life that she never had time for him. He I remember he expressing that to me. And he was like, "Yeah, man, she." She ain't, he even cried, it was like, yeah, she ain't never around. She'd come around and give me stuff, but she don't ever take me with her or do anything with me. I don't even know, you know, hardly know her. You know, my grandmother, she take care of me, but you know, he wanted his mother. He wanted his mother and she was busy doing whatever. And he got shot and killed, which is unfortunate. You know, I mean, my friend came around that way, but I, it wasn't it because wasn't of me. I mean, he burned it for a minute, but he ended up killing, killing him. They locked him up. Yeah, so. Yeah. Anyway, that. So that was Park, Parkland. Was a, was an amazing place to live. Um, it was really, 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 really good. I learned about politics. I learned about. Um, um, actually, I stopped. You know, some youth job. Like I said, Marion Burry. Uh, one of the things about the summer youth job is that he he went out. He reached out to the community centers and got all the kids jobs. Uh, from from these community centers, you know, and had them working, had us working. I had to find out how to tie, tie and all that stuff. I had to work, you know. That's 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 what Murray and Bray like. No, you're gonna put your ass to work. You gonna learn how to work because what Murray and Bray was doing, and this is really cool. If you was a developer and you wanted to build something, he was like, yeah, you gonna you you can build here, but you're gonna use our black you're gonna use our black construction workers. And you're gonna uh, hire some of our youth 
and teach them how to work the job. Well, she ain't coming. You know, you ain't coming if if you don't do that. And that was that was amazing. That, that was that was a uh, that man had power. He did for the did for the, the seniors and the youth. That's why they called him the mayor for life. But yeah, so um, so when I was, I was in, when I was in Parkland you know, and I, and I um, forged my my mother's name, I signed up for Jocko because I I felt like I couldn't. I felt like I couldn't get ahead. I felt like I was, I just didn't want to be in the same loop like everybody else. I wanted more. I, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something that was that was really interesting in my life. And I'm gonna cut this off about 50 minutes. So I, I was, I'm about to cut this off in a minute. When I caught the bus, and I remember that what, what sparked my what sparked my intentions is when I caught the bus, and I went past my stop. I was catching the bus and went past my school and it took me, I think it was a 32, it took me from southeast all the way uptown. I stayed on the bus. I stayed on the bus all the way. Because I catch the bus and I get, off, I get off, it's all black folks. But when I was going, catching the bus past the school, out of the neighborhood, out of the ward, I realized that it was houses, there was uh, monuments, there were mansions. There was green grass. I seen kids get off to school and run into their yards and they had dogs and and all of this stuff. And it kind of opened my mind, like, what else am I missing? Like, I never seen this before. I ain't gonna never forget that. I never, I was like so blown away and so intrigued to find out what do they have? How do they live like that? How can they, how can they get, how, I want that. I want to live like that. I want to, I want the same. You know, that kind of sparked my interest up. I was really curious in how it was, and that sparked my interest. Like I got to do something different. I want to. I want to live like they live in. I want to live where all, there's always drugs. We have no grass. You know, the, the people just hanging out have no no direction. I want to do something different. I see these people having a good times and stuff like that. I'm like, man, I want that. And that, that kind of sparked my interest, and I I saw things a little different. You know, I saw things different. And um, that's why I signed up for job call. I was like, man, I'm gonna do something in my life. I gotta do something. I can't be, I can't just be sitting around in the neighborhood. That's that's boring. That's dumb. And so I went to job call, and um, I I, I, try, I signed up for uh, Word Word Perfect. I think it was Word Perfect or something like that. And um, job call was a totally different beast too. Out there in Laurel, that was crazy. People from Baltimore. I met people from Baltimore, Jersey. Boston, it just everybody, everybody from around the globe was in, in Job Corps. And they all had different accents and different ways of living. Man, I'm trying to tell you, uh, in Job Corps, Job Corps was, was a wild place. We used to drink Cisco, we used to drink Cisco, Joe. Cisco used to have people bent. Cisco and the OE. Good, good, good mother. I remember one time I used to, work, I used to be there and I used to travel through the woods and to bring back food and stuff like that, or, or, or cigarettes, and sell them. Sell them cigarettes for a dollar cigarettes. I was making a lot of money. I'm a hustler, I come from, come from, I come from, the, come from the hustling hood, you know? And um, it was, it was man, I'm trying to tell you, Job Corps changed, Job Corps made me realize the diversity of all the different people from around the different um, states and stuff like that. Make me curious even more about how, uh, what it is about, what it is about the um, the different states? I wanted to know. I was curious because they were talking. I listened to them. What's so where you live at? You know, what's out there? You know, what y'all do? And, and they talking. I'm like, oh, I want, I want to see that. You know, I want, I want to, I want to see what what y'all talking about because I'm from, I'm from the east. You know, I'm from southeast. So you know, I want to see. I, I think I can handle. I think I can handle some hoods. You know, I, I ain't. I wasn't afraid. You know, I wasn't afraid. Shoot that, bro. Shoot. I'm shoot. It's all, you all, and y'all from Southeast, and you know, you, you might die tomorrow. That's how I was. You know, I was in my mind was like, shit. You might walk out. You might walk out your door and get shot and killed. That's just how. I, just it is what it is. I've seen so many people die like that. I seen so many people get shot. I seen when I was at Wild Place. I seen a guy shot in the neck. Um, I seen people brains. Like I said, the guy got shot in the head. I seen people brains get shot out. Um, just craziness. Craziness. But that was the way I was raised. That was that was my that was a neighborhood. But I felt like I didn't fit. I felt like this just wasn't my section to be in. 
I don't know, it just felt like I couldn't fit. And um, I remember some job call, um, one time I was drinking Cisco and stuff like that. And um, that's the first time I met this Jamaican dude. And he was like, he had a like, rubber band full of joints rolled up <laughs> and rubber band like this. He said, I smoke every day, man. I smoke every day. I'm like, dude, you ain't even living. This, this dude was, it was crazy. And I remember one time I was all, I think I was in Cisco and I started fighting with somebody. And next thing you know, I had domes fighting against domes and cause Southeast and, oh, back, well, they called me South back up, up in, uh, up in Job Corps, called me South. So I was up in that joint, South, you are? Right? I, mean, I was all drunk, man, they telling us shit. And they had the dogs fighting and the police and the dogs and the lights and all that stuff. That was wild. I don't know, I was wild, I was wild when I was younger. But yeah, so, um, I'm gonna call this real. But, so we, I stopped, I'm gonna stop at the job call cause it's, it's, uh, it's some more stuff, man. That's just at the beginning of, the, of this life, this life trail. And then I'm gonna be trekking back and forth. I'm just talking. But I just think, um, let y'all know, you know, wildlife Joe and I'm gonna I'm share it you know I'm so thankful and grateful for what I have I am um, I'm unselfish I, I'm, I mean I am I am totally unselfish I'm really thankful um, if I lose it all today I'm still thankful because I wouldn't I know how to get bounced back um, life is always good I'm thankful for the day the sun the moon my breath my thought of mine. Um, life is life is, is great, and I want to share that because I want you know a lot of people think they need a lot. I had nothing, but I had humbleness and respect and uh, the ability to listen. And God put all the rest of it, and God put all the rest of it in the way. You know, I don't have no I don't have no strong education. I don't have any, um, I ain't come from no money. Uh, father, father figure, you know, one thing about the father figure thing is that um, the neighborhood raised me, the community raised me. I I can't even, I can't, I, so many people have poured into me and told me things and even the drug dealers. I mean, one time I was on the drug dealers, they said, look, look dude, you don't belong in this block. I actually said, get the fuck off the block. You don't belong here. Why? You ain't got it. I was like, yeah, you may be right, because I feel like I don't fit. I always feel like I don't fit. So, uh, this is probably, I don't know, maybe part one of some craziness I'm talking. I don't know if I'm going to put this up or not. But uh, if I do, look for part two, because I'm just going to tell you, you know, how, how things are. So we're leaving off at, um, yeah, around Parkland and, to, and Job Corps. You know. All right. All right, family. I'll talk to you till next time.